good morning and uh, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thank you for uh, watching and coming along with me on my many quilting and bag making adventures and my crafting adventures here on YouTube and uh, also on the Bernina groups. Today uh, I am going to start, I'm going to be working on a little panel quilt. Um, and I think this, when this is finished, it's going to be 53 by 67, so it'll be throw size. And the way this happened was actually by accident. I ordered this fabric here, uh, and I thought I was ordering yardage for a bag that I wanted to make. <laughs> and when it came, it's a panel. It, it's, it's a big, big panel. And this is... Uh, it's called, the fabric line is called Moody Bloom, and it's by Moda. And uh, so grab, grab this panel and some accent fabrics and come along with me, and we can make this little panel quilt together. It's very, very, very beginner friendly. And this is the pattern I'm going to be using. And I got this from the Jordan Fabrics website. It's free, and it's just three pages, and you print it off. And I've, you can see I've marked mine up pretty good. So I already have everything figured out. And uh, when I got this panel, I didn't have anything else to go with it. So I went to uh, my some of my favorite online websites for fabric and I purchased my accent fabric which is part of the same line and uh, I think this fabric here is from a different line but all of these including the jelly roll are from the Moody Bloom line and uh, or you can type in create joy project I think that's uses this fabric too so um, Anyway, let's get started. The first thing you have to do before you can uh, do any cutting is decide what is going to be your main accent and what's going to be your secondary accent. The pattern asks you to uh, have the panel either a layer cake, a 10 inch layer cake, or a jelly roll. Um, a main accent, a secondary accent, and then it asks you to uh, have binding and backing, which we know we'll need. Um, so my, my main accent is going to be this green. So that's what's going to go up closest around my panel. And my secondary accent is going to be the pink. So the pink is going to go, a little strip of pink is going to go at the top of all my little jelly roll strips. And it's going to be my binding. So I got enough of this fabric to do it, do the accent part and the binding. And then the green is going to be this pretty green that has kind of a metallic look to it, but not really. It's hard to describe, but it does have kind of a little shine which I think is really cool because in the panel there's some metallic with a little shine so uh, that'll be fun to see how this comes together so all right we're gonna I'm going to press I'm gonna cut my secondary accent first so I'm going to press this and I'm going to use some best press um, this is best press and water mixed half and half um, and I'll probably use a medium heat on my iron because I don't want to... Um, this is just in a little mister bottle. And I don't want to put too much heat on this. I don't want it to shrink a lot. And I have not pre-washed any of this. So I'm not going to because I'm using Jelly Roll. Alright, got my, I've got my secondary accent pressed up. I've looked on my pattern. And I need to cut two 
one inch by width of fabric, which is going to be subcut into some different lengths, and then another six by one inch, six one inch by width of fabrics for the strip units. So I'm going to start by cutting eight, six, seven, eight, one inch strips by width of fabric. And I'm going to square up the end of my fabric and get that nice and straight. And I'm going to just use the lines on my cutting mat for that. And then when I start cutting my strips, I'll use my ruler. All right, here we go. We need one inch strips. Okay, got my, uh, I've got all my one inch strips cut. And now I need to do my sub cuts. Uh, so it's, uh, the pattern is telling me that uh, I need to cut from the two strips. I need to cut four one by seven strips and four one by seven and a half. So we'll do that now. And I'm going to take my selvage edges off down here on the end because I don't want any selvages in my quilt. Salvages just don't seem to like it in a quilt. They they don't behave themselves very good. And, oh, let me see if I got it all the way. Yep, I think I did. All right, so now we need, and I think I need to square this up a little better. It doesn't look square to me. So I'm going to do it one more time. Just take a little tiny. All right, now we need, so we need four one by sevens. So since I have this layered up, I have four layers. So let's go to seven inches and cut it off. I'll have to turn it around. There we go. Four seven inch ones. So I'm going to put this on here right at seven inches. And then I need four at seven and a half. And then we have all of our secondary accent pieces cut for now. Okay, I'm ready to cut my main accent. So in the pattern it has, this is a little bit more complicated, it has you cut one at seven inches, four at seven inch, seven inch squares, then another width of fabric, seven inches, and then three widths of fabric at five inches, two widths of fabric at three inches. So on the, on the width of fabric ones, I wrote these down so that I would know what I was cutting. So I'm going to cut all the width of fabric strips first, and then the last thing I will cut will be the four seven inch squares. And those will be for the corner, part of the corner patchwork on that. So <clears throat> I've written down I need two seven inch. So I'm going to need a wider ruler. And I'll probably have to fold my fabric over. So let me see. I've already squared up the end because you saw me do that previously so you you know how to square up the end of the fabric so let me pull this up here where you can see it a little better all right 
I need two seven inch widths of fabric, so I'm gonna have to get a bigger bigger ruler. Too small. <laughs> I'll find one. <clears throat> there we go. So here is seven inches. And we'll make sure we're good and square here. Yep, looks good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, we're good. So we need two strips that are seven inches by the width of the fabric. So there's that. So let's cut one more. And we'll square it up. <clears throat> really nice. Whoops, my ruler slipped. There we go. I'll get back on track here. Okay. I have a new blade in my rotary cutter, so that it should go just fine. Alrighty, now we need three five inch by width of fabric. So let's go down here to five. Square this up nice. So I've got my five inch this way and five. I've got a straight line on my five inch grid this way. So there's one, <clears throat> and I'm kind of squaring up on the fold, not down here on the salvage. We're going to cut those salvages off like we did before. We'll we'll do that while we're working. And there's two. I've got to fiddle with my fabric just a little bit. Get that, get this out where, and I'm holding on real tight right here so that it doesn't wiggle around too much. And there we go. Make sure we're lined up good. And we are. So we need one more five inch. So we'll cut that. And so now I need four seven inch squares. So let's do this this way. And this way. <clears throat> Make sure we're square to start with on these. And this is doubled up. So here's two. Whoop. Two seven inch squares. And This will make our four. And so there is our main accent fabric all cut out. All right, we've got we've got our secondary or our main accent cut, and we've got our little um, secondary accent cut, and now we're going to move on to the jelly roll. So um, first thing we get to do is open it and I usually just take a pair of scissors and start it. It's, it's always kind of hard to open a jelly roll because they look so pretty all, <clears throat> all pretty. So let's take this off. 
something I always do on the jelly rolls. Um, these things can, when they cut them, they create quite a bit of um, fuzz. Just a lot of fuzz. So I'm going to take a fresh lint roll, sticky lint roll, and I'm going to go over the top and pick up as much fuzz as I can. That way it's not so messy. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. The rubber band was broken, otherwise it's, uh, it's a lot easier. The rubber band stays on there, but, but we can make it work. It's going to be okay. Just be careful with it. You can see how much lint is coming on my lint roller. So our pattern, I've been reading my pattern, and it tells, tells me that I'm going to need 18 of these strips. And, and uh, in looking at the picture of the quilt here, I see that there's a pretty good balance of lights and mediums and darks. So I'll, I'll, when I open this up, I'll um, probably take some of each. You know, when a jelly roll is put together, you can see in this, in this one, there's medium, dark, medium, light, dark, medium light, medium light, and, and you know, so they just, they put them together so that they look pretty on the roll. So we're going to have a look here and see. We've still got quite a bit of lint, even with the lint roller, but, but that's okay. So let's see, we need 18. So if we, if we say light, medium, dark, we'd need six of each. So let's see, we're gonna, let's call this a dark and this a dark. And we'll call this probably a medium. I'm going to put these in a pile here. Medium, medium. That's going to be dark. That's going to be a dark, but I do like it. I like this one better than I do this blue, so I'm going to trade it out. And then here's a light. Nope, this is a medium. And I like it better than I do this turquoise, so I'm going to switch that around. So you just keep going until I'm going to call this a light. Oops. This one's a light. So you just keep going until you get six, six, and six. Okay, I got my darks, my mediums, and my lights all sorted out. I have to have six strips of each one and uh, we're going to subcut all these strips and the pattern tells you uh, what to cut and once again so that I don't get confused I have written down what I need to cut from each strip. So I'm going to uh, stack my strips and uh, I will probably put maybe, I might do three, three thicknesses. I'll see when I get it lined up, I'll see. I have a new blade in my cutter, so shouldn't be any problem. And I've got a three inch ruler that I'm gonna use because 
Um, this will get me across the whole two and a half inches this way and I can see my measurements good on this end. So um, let's see, let's go ahead and move these over and I'm going to scoot these up and I have not pressed uh, uh, my my two and a half inch strips, my jelly roll strips. So um, I will, I may press them as I go. You know, once I get them where they are uh, stitched on one side to something, then maybe I'll press them. So I'm going to line these up really carefully. Let me see if I can get you where you can see what I'm doing. That would help, wouldn't it? All right, let's scoot this back. So I am, I wonder if I, if I zoom you out a little bit. There, there, that's better. Okay, so I'm just laying these strips right on top of each other and being really careful. And so I have two. So this will be strip number three. And I've got my notes here where I can see them. And I'm trying not to stretch these. So there's three, three thicknesses. I'm sure I can cut that. Let's try four. You know, you don't want to, you don't want your, if you've got a nice sharp blade in your cutter, that's going to be a, a great big help. That's probably as far as I should go. So I'll stack four. And I'm going to overcut this a little bit because I've got salvages down here on this end. So I want to um, I want to cut those off. I'm trying to get you so you can see better. There we go. Maybe that will help. So let's see. Let's look at my notes. Let's get my notes right here. I need one ten inch. So let's cut this at 11. And uh, then we'll cut the salvages off. And, Make sure it's 10 inches. Yep, through just perfect. So now I'm going to keep my 10 inch pile. Uh, I got to go this way. So now I want this to be exactly 10 inches. So I'm going to I'm going to get my ruler down here at this end right on 10 inches and line it up with this edge of the jelly roll strips and cut this off and this will be waste. All right. So there is one. Now let's see. Let's put this here. And what else do we need? One six inch. So let's Let's go ahead and do our six inch one since we have these kind of lined up here. Now I'm just kind of holding on to the end and straightening, straightening the strips on top of each other. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so now we need six inches. So let's come down here. And this time we don't have to overcut because our selvages are gone. We can cut exactly six inches. So there's my six inch pile. And then we need two at eight inches from each strip. I gotta straighten these out a little better down here. It's always a good idea to be careful as much as you can. So, and I've got a little, 
I've got the fold right here that where they were originally these pieces of fabric were on a bolt. These colors are so beautiful. I can't wait to see this little quilt finished. I don't have any steam in my iron, so I'm not really doing any damage to my cutting mat. Plus, I'm not on there very long. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, now what do we need? Two eighths. Okay, so let's go eight inches here. And cut. And one more eight inch. When you when you're cutting like this with your ruler, make sure your one is down here. Because if you turn it this way and you lay it on your eight inch mark, <laughs> you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten inch strips. So make sure that your one is to the right, and that way you'll know you are cutting eight inches because it goes one to eight. Okay, there we go. So now we have this much left over, and I'm going to leave this stacked up because we may need some of these that are six inches for our corner blocks. You've got, we've got corner blocks we've got to deal with. So I am going to leave these stacked and just set them to the side. All right, we got our cutting all done. There's all our jelly roll strips cut in, and I have them stacked in the same length of a pile, 10, 6, and 8. And the first thing we're going to do when we start sewing here, we're going to get started sewing, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our main accent, which is my green, and we're going to uh, stitch the secondary accent, which is the pink to the long edge of all our um, main accent strips that we cut earlier. So we'll sew these on. I've sewn ahead a little bit and uh, got these sewn on and you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm using Aurifil thread and I'm using a 90.6 needle in my machine and my stitch length is 2.5. Okay, we're uh, right here at the machine. I've got everything kind of lined up here. Whoops, sorry. And we're just going to stitch along. And we're I'm using my 37D foot on my Bernina 770. And I'm just taking the fabric right along the edge of the foot. And I know that that's a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So we'll just sew down along here. And this is how I sewed the others. And just stop every little bit, kind of reposition. I'm not pulling or pushing on my fabric, uh, which is a very uh, important note to uh, not pull on your fabric because both of these strips are cut on the crosswise grain. So they do have a little stretch to them, not as much as bias, but enough that it can uh, pretty much uh, take you off off grain, off a straight, nice straight seam if you pull on the fabric. You just let the let the machine take it through. So we We've got most everything cut out, but I did not do any cutting on the panel. 
the main panel. And uh, my pattern directions tell me not to do that until I get my sides together. When I get the patchwork done on the sides with all the um, two and a half inch strips put together, then we'll measure that and that's going to give us a measurement for trimming our panel. The sides and the top and the bottom. Okay, I'm almost to the end. And don't worry, like on this one, you'll see that my, my fabric ends don't match up. That's okay. Don't worry about that. We'll trim that won't be used anyway. All right, there we go. Now it's time to uh, cut our uh, main accent panels <clears throat> that we have added our little secondary accent to. And we've pressed all the seams toward the pink. And each one of these needs to be cut into two and a half inch widths down the length of the pieces. And you'll see that I don't have them stacked right on top of each other because of this seam allowance. If I had this stacked, here's my scraps from when I squared up the end. Um, if we stacked them all right on top of each other, we'd have quite a, quite a wad of fabric there. It would be pretty hard to get your ruler to lay nice and flat on that. So you can see how thick this is with all these seams together. But if we stagger them, and we put one here and one here and one here, then we have a nice smooth area that we can cut. So that's what I've done with my with my pieces. Now let me see if I can scoot you over, 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 over. And I'm getting ready now to cut my two and a half inch strips. So I'm going to cut two and a half inch strips. And I've pinned this every so often down the strip so that it doesn't move around on me and I've really carefully lined these up. So here goes my first cut. Smooth as can be. So now let's let's match up our let's match up our lengths here. These are the same. This one's much shorter. Much shorter longer and here. So we will start gathering these up in in their perspective stacks. Get you get you in here. All right, let's see if I can cut this without moving any eh, I've got to move the pins. So at least one of them I do. I'll leave the others. And I'm using a three inch ruler and I'm going to cut these very carefully at two and a half inches. And I'll just keep going and I'll cut the whole length of my accent pieces at two and a half inches each strip and I will stack up all the all the lengths in their own pile that's the same. So this is how you're going to assemble your strips. The pattern tells you to put the six inch strip um, with the longest of your accent pieces and the 8 inch strip with the medium and the 10 inch strip with the short 
accent pieces. So we're going to go along and, and stitch all these together just like this with our little pink accent in the middle. And you're going to press so that the seams go toward your pink accent. And you'll have a nice, beautiful seam. And this is where I'm pressing my two and a half inch jelly roll strips. When I press this seam, I'm just misting it lightly with some best press and pressing the whole strip and I'm not using any steam. I don't use steam when I quilt. So when you're putting your pieces together, make sure you've got a nice even end there. Whoops, sorry. Um, on both pieces. And it doesn't really matter what side you stitch from. I gotta get my arm around the camera here. It's not, I might not be able to film very good like this. So let's stitch this one from this side and you can see how it would be to do it from the other side. Okay, we're just going to take off across here. one and you just do your chain piecing and you'll do this on you know we've got three piles of these strips to put together so and then we'll press everything each piece will need to be carefully and gently pressed and uh, then we'll get to have some fun with laying out the strips to see where we want our different colors to land and we'll do some measuring and it'll be it will soon be time to cut our panel and when we get to that point it's our quilt is nearly finished. I've got all my main and secondary accents together and I've attached all the, the jelly roll strips the way the pattern told me to do. I do have some leftover accent strips so we'll see if there's anything I need to do with those but I don't think so. Might have to make a couple more of something but I don't think so. And on the last page of the pattern it does tell us what to do with our corner units. Remember we cut these seven inch corner units and I've got mine all sewn together but one. Uh, so your corner units are going to look like this. You'll sew your seven inch to one side and the seven and a half inch to the other side. And you, so then in the end you'll have four of those. And your corner units are going to look like this. Where you, you won't have any of these accent pieces attached. You're going to just have some jelly roll strips and it's going to tell us how to do that when we get to that point. Um, so for now, what I'm going to do next, my pattern tells me that I should line up my strips and this is kind of a skyscraper sort of a up down, up down, up down, up down kind of thing. Um, and it tells me to line these up 
and it wants me to use 21 pieces in a multicolored arrangement to make a side border unit for my main panel. And when I'm done, it should measure 42 and a half inches. And this is a side unit, so I'll make two of these. And this is the end unit, and it wants me to lay out 14 of the pieced units. Um, and that should measure 28 and a half inches when I'm all done. So that's what I'm going to do next, is I'm just going to lay these out in an arrangement that is pleasing to me in this sort of skyscraper looking arrangement on here. And then I will sew each of these together and the pattern tells me to press all seams to one side. and then another medium. Let's see here. Let's see if I can find pieces that make me happy. And then we need kind of a lighter blue. So then this one goes way down. This is a short, short one. All right. So we, then I'm just going to go ahead and keep going across, adding, adding pieces that bring out the colors, look really pretty. Now I need a tall one again. Let's make it a really bright one next to that. We'll just keep going down, down the sides. I'll put a dark one in here now. Okay, we got all our, these are my two long sections, and these are my two uh, top and bottom sections and I've just followed the pattern all the way through and um, now I'm working on these corner corner units and my pattern gives me <clears throat> kind of a picture to follow and it says it wants me to take six of these leftover two and a half inch strips and oh, four of them I'm sorry four and cut them to six inches so then we're going to stitch them together and we're going to sew them to one side of this corner square this being top this being bottom this being outside bottom right and uh, outside bottom and then it wants me to sew seven two and a half inch strips by six inches to go across the top so I'm going to do that next and I'll do that for all four of my outside corners I've got all four of my corners done here's all four of my corners and so now I'm going to put one corner uh, on each side of my top and bottom borders that go around the outside of my panel. And I wanted to show you um, just a little bit about how I pressed everything. The pattern tells you just how to press everything. So just follow the pattern and Make sure you press everything just the way the pattern says. I'm going to check all my pieces here. They all look pretty flat. I need to come back and, and just tidy up a little bit, I see. This one looks good. So this is kind of, you press all your seams to one side. And I did press one seam toward 
the secondary accent piece and one seam away from it right here. This seam goes toward it. This seam goes away from it. But this is how I press them. So now we're going to we're going to have a look at where we want to put them on the ends of of our top and bottom panel. <clears throat> and the pattern says to use the picture to orient yourself as to where these corner squares go and how to put them in. So it looks to me like they go on just like this. And then I'll put one on the other end and stitch those two the the, t the shorter panels that we made, the 20, I think they're 28 inches. Let's get our panel and have a look at that. Let's get my pattern out of the way. I can already see it needs pressed, huh? Really bad. Okay, let's see where we're at here. What we got, and let's see if it's square. We might have to square it up before we cut it. So, let's see. That come down to, to um, 22, that's 44. And this is the width, I think. So 44, so we're going to cut it down to 42 and a half this way. And then, no, no, we're going to, yeah, we are, yep. And then this way it will be, it'll have to be 28 and a half, which is right here. So we'll come in on each side and, and cut it back a little on each side. So it's time to cut, cut our panel to size. Um, and I, I took off all the green border around all four edges of my panel. And I steamed it so that uh, I could get, since it's such a big piece of fabric and I needed to straighten the grain on the fabric. So I got that done. Um, and so uh, I need my panel to be 42 and a half by 28 and a half. So when I measured it this way, I folded it. It's folded in fourths so that uh, this is the length top to bottom. This is the width side to side. And this is the main fold and this is the very center of the panel. So when I measure it this way, I only have 21 inches. So I need 21 and a fourth to get 42 and a half. So my panel is going to be just a little bit shy of the length that I need uh, from the top to the bottom of the quilt. So we'll see how my, we'll just see how my borders fit in and uh, uh, I might have to do a little bit of adjusting before everything is all said and done. And so the width, the width needs to be 28 and a half. So I came over here 14 and a fourth. And I used my friction pen and made a mark. And then I came down here and measured over 14 and a fourth used my pen and made a mark. So now we're going to cut this because this we have plenty of room to do that. So we're going to cut this and then we're going to, I'll see how my borders, my long borders fit. And put this right on my lines that I made. 
and cut. And uh, if my borders uh, on the sides don't fit very good, I can uh, fudge a little bit to uh, come up with a measurement where my borders will fit. So it's not that bad a deal. Just adding these side panels here. Um, the, this is the second one. The first one, which I thought I would have to do some adjusting on. It went on perfectly. I didn't have to do anything. Um, and so what I've done is I found, I found the center of my panel. Top and bottom panels fit this well too. That would be pretty nice. So here's the other half. So it looks like I'm going to be over a little bit on this end. So let me see. No, well, maybe not. I think I can just settle it in and have it fit. Anyway, I'm going to try that. So, I have this pretty well pinned. So I guess we'll go ahead and stitch this on and move ahead. Here's my Moody Bloom quilt. All done. It finished out, it, it's not quilted yet. This is just the top. And it is 53 by 70. So uh, now I'm going to uh, put together a cute back using leftovers from my jelly roll strips. And I will get it sandwiched up and then I'm going to quilt it using edge-to-edge -edge quilting on my uh, machine using my embroidery module. I hope you enjoy sewing and I hope that you have made one of these little quilts along with me. And uh, I hope you'll send me pictures. Uh, post on the Bernina groups on Facebook. Let me see your pictures. And if you have any questions, definitely just ask, post a comment. Um, and I will see them all and answer each one. So uh, have a great day, everybody. So something pretty.